Welcome to your weekly UAS news update. We have four stories for you this week. Part 108 NPRM, uh, we have a bunch of updates. Skydio unveils two new drones for specialized operation. We have Otarian that is securing $130 million in funding. That's a ton. And then an update to the story from last week on the Super Scooper uh, mid-air collision. Let's get to it. And first up this week, let's go ahead and talk about some Part 108 NPRM stuff. Uh, the deadline is approaching for submitting your comment. At the time you're gonna be watching this video, if you watch it when it's posted, 10 days, okay? So uh, please take the time to go ahead and write your comment on uh, how this is going to affect your ability to fly beyond visual line of sight. And if you are planning to fly beyond visual line of sight, it is going to affect your ability at, is, as it is currently proposed. Uh, we created two videos, one that explains the NPRM in full detail, and then also one that explains how we plan on commenting. Uh, we have almost 200 uh, companies that have uh, backed up our proposal so far. Uh, if you wanna be one of those, there's actually a link somewhere in the comments. There are currently only 800 uh, comments as I looked, as I was writing the script. Uh, there were over 50,000 comments on the NPRM for Remote ID. We have 10 days to submit a lot of comments, okay? Also on this topic, uh, DJI sounded the alarm this week on the NPRM. Uh, the company is warning that the rules as they are currently written could effectively ground the vast majority of drones that are being used today. Not just DJI drones actually, and then sideline thousands of skilled pilots. Uh, everyone agrees, that we need to have a clear pathway for the BV loss and PRM. And uh, DJI is just pointing out that some of these uh, issues here uh, in the draft, their biggest issue is the proposed country of origin restriction. The rule right now would limit airworthiness acceptance to drones that are made in the United States or in countries that have a specific bilateral agreement. Here's the problem. The United States at the moment does not have any of those agreements for UAS. This would immediately disqualify pretty much almost every drone that are currently being used by public safety agencies, inspectors, uh, inspectors and commercial operators. Again, not just DJI drones. Another major concern here with the role is the simplified user interaction, uh, that's called SUI for short, which prevents doing any kind of manual flying. Now, this would exclude operations that rely on a skilled pilot in the loop, which is how most of us fly today, uh, including those that have waivers to fly beyond visual line of sight. Now, the proposal also looks to bar the use of the uh, common 2.4 to 5.8 gigahertz radio link uh, for any BV loss flights that happen over a specific type of uh, category of population, which is category two, which is very easy to get to. And this would also ground most existing drone, not just DJI drone. So, all of those I think are very valid comments that we also mentioned in our response. So please, again, if you haven't yet written your comment for part 108, time is running out. All the comments have to be submitted by October 6 of 2025. Next up, we have American drone manufacturer Skydio that is expanding their lineup with two new specialized drones. They've announced the R10 for indoor operation and the F-10 for long range, which is like a fixed wing type of flight. The R-10 is designed for tactical indoor situation where you wouldn't want to really be sending a person. Think about the Avada 2, which is what a lot of agencies are using now, even the Avada 1, even the DJI uh, FPV. Now it's compact, 10 by 10 uh, inches. It uh, weights 1.7 pound, and it has a built-in uh, blade guard for navigating tight or sometimes even dangerous spaces. Now it offers features for first responders that has, uh, including the, the, the lighting, we have two-way radio communication to communicate with a suspect or with a victim, and then uh, Skydio's obstacle avoidance for flying in complete darkness. Now, the idea here is for the drone to be used uh, as the first drone through the door, giving officers eye inside before they actually enter. Uh, the R10 is actually slated to come out uh, later this autumn, and uh, they're saying that it's gonna cost around $6,000 plus another $3,000 yearly uh, as, a, uh, as an additional fee. Then they have the F-10, which is built for speed and endurance. Uh, this is a fixed wing drone that can hit speeds of uh, up to 80 miles an hour and then stay airborne for more than 90 minutes. Now this is still, they said, a prototype during the event, but it's a good fit for large scale BV loss missions like monitoring wildfires, for example, conducting uh, long search and rescue operations. Now, the F-10 is scheduled to be released in the first half of 2026. Uh, both of these drones also integrate with the X-10 ecosystem using the same software, same controllers, and the same type of workflow. It's gonna be interesting to see if we can actually get our hands on one of these and uh, put them to the test. 
Next up, we have Ortarian that has secured a massive $130 million in Series B funding in order to scale the defense software. Uh, the company, which began with open source drone software, has evolved into a major defense contractor. Now, they're creating an operating system for autonomous systems across air, land, and sea. Uh, according to the reports, their technology is already being used on the battlefield in Ukraine, where they are currently delivering tens of thousands of AI strike kits uh, under a Pentagon contract. Now, this new funding will help Artarian expand its work on uh, the AI-enabled software for large-scale uh, coordinated drone operation. Sadly, there was no real talk about, um, you know, getting into the commercial or the consumer market, which is really what we need at the moment. And then finally, an update to last week's story about the drone that hit the firefighting airplane in LA earlier this year. Now, we mentioned last week that uh, he had to pay over $60,000 in repair for the aircraft and then a few hundred hours of community service. Now, we also found out later after the, uh, we published our video that uh, Peter Hackerman, that's his name, is also facing jail time and then a staggering $156,000 fine after he crashed his Mini 3 Pro into a firefighting airplane. Now, he admitted to flying the drone in the uh, temporary flight restriction over the wildfires near LA, uh, where the drone collided with the Super Scooper airplane, uh, punching a, a football sized hole into the wing and forcing it to land for repairs. Uh, the pilot pleaded guilty for unsafe operation and he was sentenced actually to 14 days in prison, uh, 30 days days at uh, home detention and then 150 hours of community service and then a total fine of $156,000. Again, great reminder, just don't be that guy. And then in post-flight this week, our show in the premium community where we share our opinions a little bit deeper. We're going to cover all three of these topics and then we're going to talk about the uh, DJI Mini 5 weight gate. Uh, we'll uh, talk to you there. And in the meantime, fly safe and we'll see you next week. It was a Mini 3, I believe, that, that hit the Super Scooper. One of the most public for sure. Over 60,000 in fines. We reported on that. That was repayment for the repairs. He got jail time. It was only 14 days. House arrest House after arrest that. For, for 30? And then That's nothing. That's like less than COVID. Yeah, that's basically... <laughs> I don't know if you've ever pulled a 14-day stint, but... The breakfast is okay, but the lunch... <laughs> your tattoos.